Yes. Hello and welcome back. I hope you have seen my first video on uh, this chapter, Type of Economies. Here in this chapter, I told that uh, our objective is to understand that how we can uh, group the different countries or the different economies of the world on the basis of means of production that is also called factors of production and on the basis of level of development. I told you that if we uh, classify or if we group these economy on the basis of means of production then we can classify them or group them into three heading capitalist economy, socialist economy and mixed economy. Similarly, if we want to group these economy on the basis of level of development, then we can uh, classify them or group them uh, under a heading developed economy and underdeveloped economy. So today we are going to see or uh, understand some more features of capitalist economy, its merit and demerits. And if the time permit, we'll also try to understand some more features that we see in a socialist economy, its merit and demerit. So let us start with the chapter and uh, find out some more features of a capitalist economy and socialist economy. So as you can see on the screen, the first important feature that we commonly see uh, in all the countries that uh, can be grouped under a capitalist economy system is, th is that there exists a property, private property and the inheritance law. So this is a commonly find in all the countries that can be grouped under a capitalist economy. What is this? It's very simple. I'm not uh, reading this. I'll, I'll just try to explain you what is private property and the law of inheritance. So this private property and the law of inheritance implies that <clears throat> any individual has the right uh, to acquire wealth and after the death, that wealth of the person get transmitted to their children or to the person of their choice. So what we see that due to the existence of private property and the law of inheritance, the people get motivated to save and to acquire more wealth. And in that process, what they do, they add something to the national income of, of the country. So as a, as a citizen of the country, if I have that right and if I produce, if I, if I know that after the death, the entire property of mine is going to get transmitted to my children or to my family, therefore I'll work hard to acquire more, more and more wealth. And in that process, one way, one way I'm adding something to the uh, production of our country or something in the national income of the country. So we see that due to the uh, existence of private property and the law of inheritance, uh, we find the capitalist economy get benefited with increased national income or increased production of good. Similarly, we also see the second important feature that we uh, generally see in a capitalist economy is the freedom of enterprise. What, what is freedom of uh, freedom of enterprise imply? It imply that the businessman or the entrepreneur uh, are free to uh, take any business or free or uh, have the right to start any business of their own choice. So there is no restriction that is put forward from the government side on the uh, on the uh, businessman or on the entrepreneur regarding the production of goods. So they are completely free. So this is a second important uh, important feature that we see in the capitalist economy that motivate the producer to produce uh, varieties of good in the economy. But I'll point out one thing here that there is a small restriction uh, on the enterprises and the restriction is that they cannot produce the good that is related to war good or that is uh, that is related to public utility service. So the producer in this type of economy are although allowed to produce any goods of their choice, but they cannot produce war good like arms and ammunition. They cannot produce arms and ammunition uh, without the permission of the government and of all, also they can not generate any public utility service. Public utility service means service that is generally uh, brings satisfaction to the uh, uh, community. That is, I can talk, we can talk about, or I can give you one example, like this uh, service of a police. So uh, the law and order in the country is maintained by the uh, by the government through with the help of the police. So that service is nothing but the police service is a example of a public utility service which is given by uh, the government itself so the private enterprise cannot do this so this is a small restriction that we find in terms of uh, uh, that is the on the freedom of enterprise so we we see here so this is the second important feature of capitalist economy coming on to the third important feature which is a most interesting feature that we see in a capitalist economy we say sometimes that the consumer in this type of economy is a king 
why we say they are king because it is the consumer who decide that what type of commodity to consume and on the basis of that the producer produces that, that commodity so somewhere or other we can see that there is a freedom of consumption to uh, consumer so the consumers are free to consume any commodity of their choice and hence they are known as king of the uh, entire economy so these are the three important feature that we commonly see in in those country that can be grouped under capitalist economy right there are three more features so let us quickly go through these three more features and then we'll go for some merits and the demerits of the capitalist economy so as you can see here the fourth important feature in a capitalist economy is the existence of market mechanism or what we see or what we say that the market mechanism principle uh, work in a capitalist economy what is this again i'll explain you uh, this is nothing but the price of any commodity in the market in a capitalist economy or in a countries that are grouped un, uh, under a heading of capitalist economy is determined from the demand and supply demand and supply is a very important topic in economics and we find that ca in capitalist economy system this demand and supply actually determine that what should be the price of the commodity so that is what we uh, we say a market mechanism so uh, for example suppose if i give you one small example imagine if the pr if the price or say suppose let us take an example of a pencil so if the demand for pencil is 4 unit so there are the the total demand in the market for a pencil is four unit whereas the supply is only two unit then what we assume we assume that since the demand is more the people will be ready to pay more money because only two people can get the pencil uh, whereas the four people are demanding uh, de uh, are demanding for a pencil so we assume that when demand is greater than supply the price is going to increase similar on the other hand if we say like this that say if there is a demand for only two pencil whereas the the total supply of the pencil in the market is four unit then the opposite happen and the price fall because here we have a lot of things so this mechanism this mechanism of demand and supply actually determine the price of the commodity in a capitalist economy system so the price of any commodity in a capitalist economy system is determined from this demand and supply which is also known as market mechanism system so that is what the fourth important feature of a capitalist economy that we see coming on to the fifth uh, you know very well that in a capitalist economy since the means of productions are completely owned by the private individuals so they work for uh, they work for a profit motive and all type of economic uh, activity that we see in a capitalist economy are guided by the profit motive uh, we generally very rarely we see that there is a, any uh, welfare motive behind any economic activity in a capitalist economy so they are very professional and they work for uh, work on for a profit motive so that is the uh, fifth important feature in a capitalist economy that we see and finally coming on to the last important feature we uh, we find out that in a, a capitalist economy system there is a high degree of competition among the producer high degree of competition so everyone wants their good to be the best and uh, that is being demanded by maximum consumer and in that attempt they invest a lot of money in research and technology so that they can produce maximum output with a minimum cost so we find out that in a, a capitalist economy system there is a high degree of competition among the producer that make the market very efficient because whenever there is a high level of competition Competition efficiency increases automatically so that is uh, we find out the sixth important features in a capitalist economy so I hope you have uh, understood all the important features and it's uh, what does actually these features and how these features are benefiting a capitalist economy so there is a, a private there is a existence of private property system and the law of inheritance there is a freedom of enterprise there is a freedom of consumption the market mechanism work to determine the price of the commodity uh, all the economic activity is guided by the profit motive and there is a high level or high degree of competition among producer in a capitalist economy so these are the six important feature that i have uh, told you in order to make you understand that what are the common characteristics that we see in a capitalist economy now we are going to find out 
that uh, what are the merits what are the benefit that we see in a capitalist economy uh, and again after that we are going to find out that what are the demerits of such type of economy that is the capitalist economy so let us quickly find out so as you can see here i'll go very uh, simple and the straight that some of the merits or the advantage of uh, capitalist economy is that that in a capitalist economy we find generally lot of lot of goods are produced the goods that are in demand since there is a since all the private in enterprises are free to start any business of their choice we find out that the good for which there is a high demand in the market the producer produces lot of goods so each one try to capture the entire market and in the process of capturing the entire market they produces lot of commodities in uh, these type of economy so the one of the merits is that there is a, we do not find there is a lack of uh, or deficit of the goods in the market so there is an abundance of good that is available in the market and the consumers uh, consume consume the, those commodities so that is what one of the merit we see here okay coming on to the second important merit that i find very uh, in, uh, interesting uh, with respect to the capitalist economy is that best utilization of resources you can see the heading best utilization of resources what we see that since there is a high degree of competition among the producer or among the enterprises so each and every uh, enterprises in the process or in in a uh, in, on the in the condition of high competition they want to uh, improve their management skill so what they do they invest lot of money to improve their management skill so that they can use the resource at the best possible manner to produce maximum output in the minimum cost so that is what actually one of the basic objective in a capitalist economy so they do not want their resource to get wasted because get uh, if the resource uh, is wasted then we, we will not say that the producer uh, is a good producer so the point is in a, one of the, uh, one of the merit that we see in a capitalist economy or we find in a capitalist economy that the resources are properly utilized to produce the good i'll give you one small examples of uh, what i'm actually i'm talking i hope i have given this example earlier also for example suppose uh, if i say that a person who is a very good uh, uh, who is a very good sport person if that person or let us uh, have an example from a movie three idiot where uh, you remember i hope uh, you remember that uh, amir khan told that uh, how would sachin tendulkar uh, perform if he is asked to sing and lata mangeshkar is asked to uh, play uh, cricket so we find that they are not efficient but since uh, but what we find here in a capitalist economy this is not the situation in a capitalist economy the producer always want their resource whether they, that that are physical resource or human resource to use in a best possible manner so this is a second important advantage in a capitalist economy coming on to the third as you can see here we see that there is a technological advancement so there is no doubt there is no doubt in our mind that the country like usa country like uk country like france germany uh, these are the country who are uh, these countries are technologically very developed it's only because of high level of competition among the producer since there is a high level of competition among the producer what we find that uh, uh, they invest lot of money in research uh, research and development uh, uh, they invest this money in research and development so that they can find out something new technology and using that technology they can capture the market or they can produce more of the good at a minimum cost so we find the third uh, advantage of high competition in a capitalist economy is a technological advancement and this is the reason why we see that technology the uh, on the technological ground these country are far better than us so that is what we find that technological advancement is a third important feature of a capitalist economy that is the merit of a capitalist economy and coming on to the fourth important feature if you look this is again a one of a very interesting point that we can talk here uh, what happened in a socialist economy let us first uh, bring into a socialist economy or uh, that what happened in a socialist economy uh, the um, incentives say suppose incentive in the terms it can be in terms of kind or it can be incentives can be in terms of cash right so if we talk about in terms of kind or if we talk about say a small uh, firm or a small sector in a capitalist uh, socialist economy what happened in socialist economy the person uh, 
is given a higher position not on the basis of its efficiency but but on the basis of its seniority the person who are senior will be appointed a higher position but in capitalist economy the situation is completely different here in capitalist economy the higher position is not given on the basis of seniority but higher position is given on the basis of the hard work and the efficiency of the person so that is a most important point that uh, help the uh, help this type of economy to be more efficient so what we see that high price and profit objective motivate the people to work hard and to produce more and to earn more profit so capitalists capitalism provide encouragement to the daring and enterprising individual so what we find that in a capit in a capitalist economy like uh, in a system we find entrepreneur are generally the risk lover and they want they take the risk and they get uh, a large incentive for that so that is what we find one of a very important merit of a capitalist economy and finally coming on to the last uh, uh, merit so we uh, we have already discussed this point where i told that in a capitalist economy both the producer as well as the consumers are free to choose commodity of their choice so this is a say, uh, last uh, merit that we see with respect to the capitalist economy so i hope you have got so i have uh, taken out five points from your book to make you understand some of the merits of the capitalist economy so one of the merit is that lot of lot of goods are produced in a capitalist economy there is uh, uh, no lack of commodities in the capitalist economy best utilization of resource because of high competition technological advancement is always there so new new technology always uh, comes uh, come uh, in a capitalist economy whereas there is a incentive for hard work and both consumer as well as the producer are free uh, of to consume and to produce so that is what we see in a uh, Uh, capitalist economy but uh, there are some demerits also it's not that the capitalist economy is not uh, f- uh, it's actually uh, not um, it's uh, not like like this that the capitalist economy is only having merits but it has some demerits also and if we are talking about some demerits then you can find out here that yes there are demerits like inequalities in the distribution of income and wealth so one of the demerit that we can uh, say or we can talk for, with respect to the capitalist economy is that that in a capitalist economy uh, there are two groups of people uh, the some people are very rich whereas some people are poor and as a result we find that the inequalities existed in the entire capitalist economy system see here in capitalist economy since means of production are owned by private individual there exists income inequality so what we find that uh, on the on the income ground some people are rich whereas some people are poor so that w- what we find in a capitalist economy that inequality uh, among the people exist and as you can see here a picture where uh, uh, this is a person who is very rich and these are the labor those who are working for him so that is what we find inequality or uh, that is a demerit uh, and since there is a uh, difference between the rich and the poor we always find that whenever such difference exist in any economy system what we can uh, expect that there will be a class conflict class conflict means class conflict here implies that there will be a uh two different opinion uh, among the enter- enterprise or entrepreneur class and the working class so therefore we always see or we can say that one of the demerits of capitalist economy is that there is a conflict between uh, uh, entrepreneur class that is the employer class and the employees class so that is what we find one of a uh, demerits and it result in a frequent strike a strike and lockout so you can see here in this type of economy there is always a class conflict between a producing class and the working class that is the en- employer and employees as a result there is a strike there is lockdown which hampered the national income of the economy uh we can also say that uh, on one ground or other that uh, capitalism or uh, brings unemployment in the economy in the sense that uh, new technology always we find that the new technology comes and these technologies are such that they replace the human effort so what we find that due to the new technology coming up of the new and advanced technology the human uh, uh, effort or the person they f- lose their job so we that is a, another important demerits of the capitalism that we say and what we see here section of the society remain unemployed because of this moreover due to unplanned production there is always a possibility of unemployment this is again uh, as i told you if you remember i told 
that the government do not interfere in the economic activity and the producer in an attempt to capture the market the producers lot and when they find out they see that the supply is more than the demand as a result uh, they make loss and when they make loss they start uh, removing the employees from the uh, from the firm or from the company so this is how uh, we f uh, we can say that uh, unemployment can be uh, uh, result unemployment can result in a uh, capitalist economy right exploitation as we are talking on the uh, topic exploitations just now i told that there is always a class conflict due to the difference between the rich and the poor and this result in the exploitation of the working class so in this kind of economy the rich always exploit the poor the rich take away the major portion of the national income and rest of the people lead a miserable life so that is a, a fourth important uh, demerits of the capitalist economy that we find and finally there is a wastage of resources also so uh, if you remember i was telling you here that there is a best utilization of resource on the ground that they improve the management skill and they use the resource in the best possible manner but again now i am saying that we find that there are some wastage of resource so how on what ground i am saying this uh, that is the grounds are different there i am talking about the management skill but here i am talking about wastage of resource in the sense that we find that uh, the most of the resource uh, resources in this type of economy uh, since this economy is very rich economy is used for producing luxurious good just try to understand so what my point is my point is here we are saying that uh, one of the demerit is the wastage of resource on the ground that the resources in this type of economy is diverted towards the production of luxurious good and the production of necessity good get hampered because the price of the necessity good is not very high so no producer wants to uh, take that uh, uh, job so they produces those good with whose price is very high so that they can make more profit from the market so as a result we on this ground we say that there is a wastage of resources further uh, as i was telling you that there is a, a technological advantage so what happen when some some new technology come they discard the old technology so this is again one type of wastage that we see in a capitalist economy system so when new technology come the people adopt the new technology and the old technology uh, is discarded so that is again a type of wastage and the third and the most important type of wastage that we see in a capitalist economy system is the money that is invested for advertisement so lot of lot of money is invested on advertisement from the producer side to let the people inform the goods that they are producing so the so that is what we see this is again a type of a vestige that we see advertisement of large number of good uh, in uh, in the other form uh, of vestige very common in this type of economy so this is uh, these are some of the important demerits of capitalist economy system right so just quickly i'll revise what are the things we have done so if you uh, see here so we started from here where i told some of the important features of capitalist economy then uh, i told you what are the merits that we see in a capitalist economy and some of the demerits that we see in a capitalist economy uh, in next video or in some more videos and we are going to talk about some of the merits of the socialist economy uh, its uh, features its uh, criticism mixed economy and the difference between developed economy and underdeveloped economy right so uh, okay children so please go through this video try to understand because this is a chapter where you do not have to go more into the logics uh, it is just a, a idea or it is just the features that we are talking about that what are the things that we see in a capitalist socialist and mixed economy and some of its merits and demerits so please go through this, go through this video again and again in case you are having any doubt regarding any point or any line when we are going to meet in the class we are going to have a discussions or i'll try my best to clear your doubts thank you